it's a a group of people who are putting effort and love into something that could very easily become livelihoods for them if they had even the smallest way to monetize it based on the number of eyes they're getting and uses they're getting. It's really about sharing the know-how on how to create these amazing things and not just the know-how, but also the tools themselves. My name is Maxfield Holker. I am a COO at Civitai and co-founder. So I'm Justin Mayer. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Civit as well. And CPO and CTO. And, and lots of things. The joys of a startup, I suppose. Max introduced me to Midjourney in uh, that August yeah. of 2022. Mm -hmm. And I fell in love. It was like, hey, it'd be cool to build something where people could use these, these custom models. Um, people were posting them to Reddit and Discord and they just kind of vanish after that because um, they're such ephemeral platforms. And so it seemed like there was a need for this place where people could share these things that they were making, these these tools. We thought maybe we'd get like, what, like 1,000 users, 10,000 users at most? Things took off from January to March. Uh, by March, we hit a million users. There was a bunch of people exploring the tech in different pockets around the internet. There was a bunch of disparate Discord communities and, and people on Reddit. And we became kind of the center of all of this diverse development happening in this space because everybody needed the latest and greatest model and they wanted to be able to post and share it with other people. And so we kind of acted as this force that brought everybody together around kind of the cause of pushing forward open source image tech. So since then, we've we've aimed to make this space that's been very, I guess, niche and engineering kind of heavy, more and more approachable to more and more people. So this is the homepage of Civit. And the first thing we have here are our featured images. So these are images that are created by people within our community. And these images get so many reactions. So we are a massive community of people making tons and tons of awesome AI creations using uh, community-made models with community-made patches to those models called LORAs. So for each of these images, we have all kinds of interesting details here too about how to actually make this thing. So this one, for example, um, this person used Starlight Animated, the checkpoint, and this LoRa called Nuclear Hazard Style. So if we went to this LoRa here, there's probably tons of other things made to look like a nuclear hazard. Essentially what these things are, are machines to create things in a specific style. Um, so here's what it would look like if a cup was a nuclear hazard or a motorcycle, so on and so forth. And each one of these has information about how they were made and I can give these a thumbs up and uh, participate in kind of this community creation. So here, for example, is the gallery of all of the things that people have made with this LoRa. Stable Diffusion allowed you to make anything. Mm -hmm. And so when we launched, I wanted to make sure that we could continue to support that community. It was important for us to say, hey, we want to be able to support this tech as it develops. It means that we need to embrace all of it. And that's not easy. It's been incredibly difficult mm -hmm. to set up policies that, that allow kind of the creation of all things in a way that's not going to hurt people and to also uh, do it in a way that makes it so that people still have the level of control that they need to prevent the creation of content that, that can't be there. So previously, we had to um, basically audit prompts and try and catch things. And it was a constant cat and mouse game. Yeah. But with the introduction of the SPM, now we're able to actually prevent certain concepts from coming out of the model. One of the things that drew me to AI art in the first place was the fact that uh, it doesn't have any of the same human preconceptions of what should be in an image and how an image should be composed and what it should look like. And that's how you end up with these really beautiful things that you know are, are halfway between ethereal and grotesque and uh, these like blending of form and function and monster. And that's like, this is, this is cr absolutely crazy. And then you then add an, a year of people getting used to those images and training different things on top of that. And then it becomes its own style that bleeds into everything else. And so the stuff that I've seen on our site, um, I can confidently say I've never seen anywhere else on the internet. Uh, it is completely unique. One way that I've heard a creator describe it is they were in the shower and they're like, oh, well, you know, what would it look like if the whole world was made out of, of beer or what if it was made out of bones or coffee or, you know, they're sitting there eating their breakfast pastry. What if they were made out of pastries? Uh, they'll generate some of those images with AI and then they'll take those images and then put them into this thing called our trainer. Um, so we make it really easy for people to take some training data. So they'll take some images that they generate with AI and to make sure that anybody can create those things and kind of really capture the essence of that. So here's, for example, a bunch of um, 
AI generated images of what if the world was grilled chicken, right? So they took this grilled chicken images and then they throw it into our trainer here. And then from here, you know, select a style. We'll call this our, our grilled chicken, uh, Laura here, boop. And then from here we can caption these to add additional details or we can use our auto tagger to say, hey, to automatically say what these are, or we can just go ahead and start it. And then from here, it's gonna ask you for additional details. We give people the ability to either train on a few specific models. So a model focused on anime or a model focused on being semi-realistic, or they can select their own custom model to train on top of. And this is the entire library that's available on the site. From the very beginning, we were very clear on that we wanted to build things the community wanted. So we did a lot of polls. Uh, we still do a lot of polls. We do a lot of like community outreach and engagement, being like, what do you want? What do you need? How are you using the platform right now so that we can better make it optimized for your use cases? And then, while we're implementing those things, we're also then thinking of, okay, well, well, what is, what's going to be like the next step beyond that? Like, what are more going to be more, um, more intricate ways that people are going to want to use this in the future? Um, so that we kind of build an, an iterative form of being like, okay, we're, we're making these things that people want now because they're demanding it now for how they're currently using the platform while working on tools for how, uh, we think they're going to be using it in the future. I'd like to think of us for example, as the home of the open source artist. And it's kind of like a new term. I mean, there's open source development, open source code, mm. but it's really about sharing the know-how on how to create these amazing things and not just the know-how, but also the tools themselves. Mm -hmm. Look, this is almost like a whole new creator economy that come out of this because it's it's a, a group of people who are putting effort and love into something that could very easily become livelihoods for them if they had even the smallest way to monetize it based on the number of eyes they're getting, uses they're getting. Like, let's figure out how we can keep the with creators monetized while maintaining the open source ethos of, you know, making sure it can still be available and accessible to everybody.